In this lecture you are going to learn how to write your own classes. Up until now we have only used classes as a container for the main method. Now you are going to learn how to use classes appropriately. In the last lecture I said that we were going to learn how to create our own object types. And now I'm talking about classes. So what's the deal? First of all, what's the definition of a class? A class is the blueprint from which individual objects are created. And what's the definition of an object? Well, an object is an individual instance of the objects class. Of course, things are understood better when you show an example. In this case, I have the class book. Classes basically describe an object. That object can be anything you can imagine. It can be a book, it can be a car, it can be a screen, it can be a table. In this case you have in front of you, we are describing a book. Why a book? Well, I could be writing a web page for a bookstore, so I need some place to store the information about every book they have. And what information about the book do I need? That kind of information is stored in what's called a field. A field is basically a variable, but these variables are not inside any method. And when something is not inside a method, you must put an access modifier in front of their declaration, because, as I said previously, these access modifiers control the level of access other parts of the program or other programs have to this information. So, these fields contain key information about the book. And what information about the book do I need? We need a name, and I need to know the number of pages of that book. And maybe if I have to ship the book, I need to know its weight. So, when you are creating a class to store information, you must ask yourself what kind of information all of these objects have in common. In this case, it's a book, so I know every book will have a name, a number of pages, and a weight. Finally, <laughs> finally, we know what these fields are, so next. What is this right here? This is called the constructor method. And why the constructor? Well, we will see it in action later. For now, I want you to notice that this method right now is empty. And we can leave a method just like that. But not just that the method is empty. A constructor method shares the same name as its class. And I will leave it just like that because it's better to see it in action. So for now we will turn our attention to what's below of the constructor method. Here you can see a lot of methods. What do they do? Well, let's look at them. I will start with this one right here. So here I see that it's public, other parts of the program can have access to this code, it returns a string, its name is getName, it does not take any parameters, and inside of the block of code just returns the name. So when I call this method, it will simply return the value of this field right here. This is called the getter, because it gets the name. And why don't we access the name directly? Well, because the name is a field, and fields have private access modifiers. This means that other parts of the code will not have access to this. Why? Because it's dangerous. If anyone can come and change the value of the name, our code is not secure. So we need all of our fields private and we will access them with a getter. You see that we have a getter for the name, a getter for the number of pages and a getter for weight. And they do basically the same but for the number of pages it returns an int because it returns the number of pages which is a field that is an int so the value it returns must also be stored into an int variable 
and the get weight returns the weight, which is a double. Okay, now we have seen that we have three fields and we have three getters for each one of those fields. And the getter is to get the value. So how do we set the value? Yes, you guessed it right. We have a setter. A setter for the name, a setter for the number of pages and a setter for the weight. A setter is a little more complicated. A setter is void. This means that we won't store any value because it does not return anything. We see access modifier, void, set name, which is the name, and what is this? This is a parameter. When we will use this method, we will need to pass to it a parameter. In this case, a string. And what does it do with this string? Well, if we click, we see highlighted the word name. And below that, we see that this is highlighted as well. This means that these two are the same variable. Here, we are passing a parameter and using this variable right here as a placeholder for the value. And here, we are setting the value to the field name. So when we will use this set name, we will pass to it a string variable. It will be stored in this right here. It will pass down and will set the value of the field name. Why are we using the keyword this and what this mean? This means this class, this class book. So in this class book, I want to get the name. And why do we need to specify this? Well, because in this case, the name of the field and the name of the parameter have the same name. So the program can get confused. So specifying this dot name, you make sure that the program knows that you in this case are referring to this field right here. And name without this refers to the parameter. And here you see an equal sign. And this means that what's at the right side of the equal sign gets stored into what's at the left of the equal sign. I will say it again. The string we pass as a parameter gets stored into the field. And that's basically it. And we do the same for the other two setters. As you can see, each one has its own parameter type because in each case, we need to pass a different kind of value. Okay, this has been a long, long lecture, but I need to do one more thing. And that is demonstrate how to use this book class. You know that the first thing the computer looks for when you click this run button is the main method. So we can't execute any of this unless we are using it inside the main method. My main method is inside the first sample class, so I click it. Okay, how do I use a book inside of this main method? It makes no sense. Well, we know that a string is an object and how do we declare an object? Well, just like a variable, but with our custom type. In our case, I need a book called B and semicolon. Okay, I have created my own book. This is the type book is a type I have created right now because I have the class book. And that means that I can use the book type. Well, how do I initialize this variable right here? Because this just means that I have a book. I haven't initialized it yet. Well, you write an equal, the new keyword, and then you write the constructor. Okay, so the constructor, which is empty in this case, it's used after the new keyword to initialize a book variable. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is where people get stuck the most because they see book right here at the left and they see book at the right and this has parentheses and this is don't get confused this refers to the type 
and this refers to the constructor. When we initialize an object, we need to call the new keyword and then the constructor. Okay, so here I have a copy of a book. But this book does not have a name, does not have a weight. I will start by giving it a name. And how do we give a name to a book? Well, I type B, which is the name of that book, dot set name and I pass a string. In this case, this will be the black swan. So now the book B has a name, which is the black swan. Now I will create another book and this book will be called Think and Grow Rich. Now here you have two different books. They are all made with the same blueprint, which is the class book, but they are different entities. These entities, these different objects, are called instances. This is an instance of book and this is another instance of book. Okay, now let's print the name of the book called B to console. And how do we do that? Well, B and then get name. Remember that I can't access directly the fields I must call a getter. So here I'm calling the get name method. And the method returns a string. And the string is basically what the system of print line takes. For you to see it more clearly, here I will create a string variable to store the value of this name. Remember, the get name returns a string, and that means that I need a string variable to store that value. And then I can use that variable to pass it to console. Then I click on the run button and the console prints the name of that book. Isn't that amazing? Well, and this is how you store information in programs. And this is how object-oriented programming works. If you understand this, you are nearly there because now you know object-oriented programming. So make sure you practice a lot. Send me the questions you have because I will make a fact aka frequently asked questions and see you in the next lecture.